Hello everyone and welcome to video 7 in the OCR A-Level Piggy Anatomy and Physiology series. So today what we're going to be looking at is the respiratory system at rest. So by the end of today's video guys, what you should be able to do is firstly, annotate the anatomy of the human respiratory system. Secondly, explain the physiology of the mechanics of breathing at rest. Thirdly, explain the physiology of both internal and external respiration. But ultimately, you should be able to define key respiratory terms. And finally, you should be able to memorise and apply the key respiratory formula to questions. So moving forward, guys, I've got some key terms for you to get down. So if you'd like to please pause the video now and get these down, and then we will move on with the rest of the video. Just quickly, guys, we've got a couple more key terms for you to write down. So write those key terms down, then replay the video in a minute. So first things first is let's look at this key respiratory formula. So if you look at the bottom here, we'll look at, you've got the key terms above you. So once you want to pause the video, guys, here at the bottom here, I've got the key respiratory formula that you need to know. So minute ventilation equals breathing frequency times tidal volume. So if we look at an example, you've got an untrained athlete. His breathing frequency is 12 breaths per minute and his tidal volume is 500 milliliters. I haven't put the units in there, which I should have, but I'm running out of space. So the minute ventilation at the bottom here equals 6 liters per minute. So moving on, guys, let's look at the anatomy of the respiratory system. So if you look up here, we'll begin in the top left corner at the nose where air comes in. It then goes through the pharynx, then the larynx, into the trachea, those tubes, before entering the bronchi, which are these two tubes here. The bronchi then splits off into smaller things called the bronchioles, before ending at the alveoli, which are one cell thick air sacs, which have a high surface area for diffusion and gases exchange. So before jumping into the next part of the video, let's just quickly look over how oxygen is transported. So 97% of oxygen is binded to hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin, and it's transported to the working muscles that way. And only 3% is dissolved in blood plasma. On the other hand, if we look at carbon dioxide and how that's transported, only 23% binds with the haemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin. 7% now is dissolved in blood plasma, but 70% is dissolved in water as carbonic acid. Now, that may mean nothing to you now, but later on when we look at the bore shift during the respiratory system during exercise, that will, become in, that will be coming into play. Now, guys, we're going to look at the mechanics of breathing at rest. So, inspiration is an active process. Why? Because it uses ATP for those muscular contractions. Now, what muscles contract? So firstly, both the diaphragm and the external intercostals contract. Now, when the diaphragm contracts, it actually flattens. It doesn't dome, it flattens. Remember that, guys. So as well, what does it cause? This causes the rib cage to move up and out. What's the consequence of this? The volume inside the lungs increases and pressure decreases. So air moves into the lungs down the pressure gradient. Expiration, on the other hand, is passive. So there's no ATP. It, the muscles are relaxing. You don't need to use ATP to relax the muscles. So what happens here is the diaphragm relaxes and now domes, and the external intercostals also relax. This causes the ribcage to move back down and in, so volume of the lungs decreases and pressure inside the lungs increases, and then air will move out of the lungs down the pressure gradient. Moving on to the next slide, guys, we need to briefly look at both external and internal respiration. So these are simple, you know, marks to pick up an exam, like three, four mark questions, or if it's like in a 20 mark question, it will just be a short section of it. So don't worry, you just need to know these short facts. So... Look at the external respiration, it's between the alveoli and the blood. Why is it external? Because it's in contact with the lungs and the outside of the body. So basically, there's a higher partial pressure in the alveoli than the blood, it's just inspired all the air. So we then diffuse down the concentration gradient, this is what I use for concentration gradient in my nose, conch grad, into the blood. On the other hand, there's a higher partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood than the alveoli because you've just got it from all the muscles and brought it back from the aerobic respiration. So it then diffuses down the concentration gradient into the alveoli. Internal respiration, on the other hand, is between the blood and the muscles. Why is it called internal respiration? Because it's inside the body, it's at the muscles, it's not in contact with the outside, technically. So, yeah, it's between the blood and the muscles, so there's a higher partial pressure of oxygen in the blood than the muscles. Why? Because you're aerobically respiring at the muscles and you're using that oxygen. So they will then diffuse down the concentration gradient from the blood into the muscles to be used again for aerobic respiration. Also, during aerobic respiration, what do you produce? You produce carbon dioxide. So there's a higher partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the muscles now than in the blood. So then diffuses down the concentration gradient into the blood from the muscles. So last slide here for you guys. We're going to quickly look at just some simple values that you just need to learn off. So if we look at first column is breathing frequency, tidal volume and minute ventilation. Second column is the values for an untrained athlete. And third column is the values for a trained athlete. So 
An untrained athlete has 12 breaths per minute on average, with an average tidal volume of 500 millilitres and an average minute ventilation of 6 litres per minute. Trained athletes, however, have a breathing frequency of approximately 10 breaths per minute, with a tidal volume at approximately 500 millilitres as well. However, they now have a lower minute ventilation of 5 litres per minute. Now, you may be thinking, surely if they're a trained athlete, they should be taking in more oxygen. Well, technically they are. Okay, so basically, long-term aerobic training causes you to get things such as capillarization around the lungs and more alveoli are produced. What does this mean? It means that your gaseous exchange system is more efficient. So although you're taking in greater volume of air, being an untrained athlete, you're not actually getting all of that oxygen into the blood. So a trained athlete requires less air to get in, so it, because it can get more oxygen into the blood from that less volume of air than it would, you know, an untrained athlete would. So that's why they have it. So quickly to go over again, guys, what we've learned in today's video. So firstly, we can now annotate the anatomy of the human respiratory system. We can also explain the physiology of the mechanics of breathing at rest. Explain the physiology of both internal and external respiration. Fourthly, we can define key respiratory terms. And finally, we can now memorize and apply the key respiratory formula to questions. So in the next video, guys, what we're going to look at is the respiratory system during exercise. So in that video, we will look at the changes in the physiology of the mechanics of breathing during exercise compared to rest. The physiology behind breathing regulation during exercise and recovery and key respiratory graphs. So thank you everyone for watching today's video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and share this video with your friends who are also studying A-level PE. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.